Hi, this is Eva for Once Upon a Timeline, and today I'm going to discuss this concept that every cell in the human body or other creatures' bodies do not necessarily carry the same DNA. Now, I always learned that all the DNA in the body was the same. Every cell had the, dia- the same DNA, but it would uh, express differently depending on the cell's role in the body. But that storyline has changed. This is an example here with this article. Every cell in your body has the same DNA, except it doesn't. Very interesting concept here. So supposedly this guy, James Priest, was researching DNA and discovered that uh, when he did different areas of testing, he found different genetically distinct cells in different areas. And he called this condition mosaicism. Uh, some of this this uh, girl's cells carried a certain mutation and others didn't, instead of the whole body having it. So this is called mosaicism. In this timeline, mosaicism apparently is uh, fairly common. Um, and an example here is that in plants, mosaicism is very common. So what they're saying now is that uh, plants will sometimes just grow differently using different a DNA in a certain area of it, and that these witches' brooms are supposedly due to mosaicism. So basically, you have a, a tree that just spontaneously mutates and grows different kinds of foliage in one region versus another. So, uh, in the 19th century, plant breeders found that if they cut witches' broom from one tree and grafted it to another, the broom would grow and produce seeds. So the one section of the plant has spontaneously mutated, and then all seeds from that section carry the mutation. But the main original plant does not carry the mutation. So in my old timeline, that uh, that material would have been rejected as being alien and, and fought. But apparently here it is just accepted. Now in this timeline also they're saying, Pink grapefruits were developed in the same way that um, a regular grapefruit tree just sort of spontaneously started growing some pink grapefruits, and so they were able to take a cutting of the new material and just have pink grapefruits. And they call this bud sports, when a weird uh, different kind of a bud or area of growth on the plant is called a bud sport. Now, in my old timeline, a sport was when a seed grew an unusual kind of a plant. So like it was maybe a spontaneous mutation and in the DNA of the seed, and then you'd have like a, they'd call it a sport, an unusual seedling. But here apparently um, a sport is a bud sport and it grew right on the plant. So very, very weird. Uh, interestingly here, something, they're saying that Darwin uh, even researched these and uh, was curious about these bud sports. In my timeline, uh, there was no, uh, Darman did not research bud sports because they didn't exist. It's hard to think that a tumor might have anything in common with pink grapefruit, yet they are both products of the same processes. Lineages of cells that gain new mutations not found in the rest of the body. Some skin diseases, are caused by mosaicism as well. So I, I don't know if you remember, they were they were blaming it on chimerism before where people would have uh, different colored streaks of different colored skin tones um, all over their body. And they would say that this was chimerism, but now they're saying it's mosaicism, just like a spontaneous mutation of the skin coloration. So I think we're gonna see a lot more of this mosaicism now. Um, If a cell gains a mutation very early in development, it will produce many daughter cells that will end up spreading across much of the body. Late arising mutations will have a more limited legacy. So here's another interesting part. Uh, A a researcher named Dr. Walsh um, studied the neurons of a healthy 17-year-old boy who died in a car accident. They sequenced the DNA in each neuron and compared it to the DNA in cells from the boy's liver heart, and lungs. Each neuron, the researcher found, had hundreds of mutations not found in the other organs, but many of the mutations were shared only by some of the other neurons. So the, basically the argument here is that this mosaicism is all over the body. 
In essence, the boy's brain was made of millions of mosaic clusters, each composed of tiny cellular cousins. It's hard to say what these mosaic neurons mean to our lives, what it means for each of us to have witch's broom growing in our skulls. So basically they're saying there's little mutations and variations in our DNA all throughout our body. What we do know is that mosaicism introduces randomness into the development of our brains. Mutations which arise at random will form different patterns in different people. The same zygote would never develop exactly the same way twice. Okay, so what does this mean for us? Basically, it means that similar to plants, um, any part of us can have kind of a rogue or different DNA and we've always had it since birth, apparently, or we, it can be random mutations that suddenly occur. Uh, one example would be cancer, but um, other examples could be either strengths or weaknesses in any body system. So here's an example of a plant mutation. This plant uh, supposedly has reverted to a, a different form of, of growth pattern right here. Now, if you were to suddenly take this vegetative cutting here and cut it off and grow it, you'd have a whole different kind of plant with a whole different seeds and growth patterns. And so they're saying that humans are also like that, that we have different regions in us that have different DNA and could at any time grow differently or respond differently to stimuli. Here's another example of a bud sport where this flower just has one little section that is growing a diff completely different color. Here's the pink grapefruit again. Late maturing navels were developed from bud sports. So now supposedly all these variations of different fruits and vegetables, a lot of them were from bud sports. Now in my old timeline, um, they would be from seeds that grew unusual ways, that kind of a sport, or they would be from cross-breeding and cross-pollinating so that they would attempt to get such a plant. Um, and of course, they also have the GMOs where we try to artificially do that. But in this timeline, they just had weird offshoots of a plant and they would just propagate that. They would just cut it off almost like a mutant arm of a plant would just grow. And a large number of these current varieties supposedly come from this bud sport. And what this means is that any part of our body could have different DNA from other parts of our body. And somehow it all stays together. There's no rejection. And um, anything could happen pretty much as far as genetics are concerned. Anything could be discovered. This is going to be part one of a two-part series where I covered mostly the plants. But what does this mean for humans? It gets even more weird from here. This is Eva signing off for Once Upon a Timeline. Mm -hmm.